Hi, everybody. I'm Virginetta Casho, and I lead social here at New Relic. I've been here for about four years and change. I'm also a very proud member of Relics of Color. And today, we're very proud to put on this event for you for in celebration of Filipino American History Month. So just a little bit of background on Filipino American History Month. It was established in 1991. And there's a couple of reasons why it exists in the month of October. One, it's also my birth month. But you know, that's neither, that's neither here nor there. Um, but for real, um, it was commemorated for a couple of reasons. One, it's when the first Filipinos actually landed in San Luis Obispo. That was in 1587. So if you're familiar with Morro Bay, Filipinos actually landed there up in 1587 by way of uh, Spanish trade coming through, uh, actually meant for Mexico. So the first Filipinos landed there. Secondly, it's also the birth month of Larry Itliong. Larry Itliong was instrumental in the United Farm Workers Movement. So you may be aware of Dolores Huerta and um, some of those folks in UFW movement, but Larry Itliong was also part of that movement in making sure that the Delano workers had their migrant rights as well. So without further ado, I'd like to give some introductions to our speakers. If you're familiar, they were here last year as well. They're gonna be talking about an event called Undiscovered. Show of hands, who's been to Undiscovered? Who's, okay, cool. So it's a monthly event put on by these wonderful people here, our speakers, Desi and Gina. And it is every third weekend of the month. It's in Soma, Filipinas, which is kind of like by the Mint, if you guys are familiar. It's a free event. It's an event that's really awesome. It has Filipino uh, um, b-boys and musicians, food, art, all of that. And it's a great way for our community to kind of come up in that area and why some, why that particular area Desi is going to get into. So, so here we have Desi Dangangan and Gina Marco. So Desi brings 15 plus years of experience creating, creating, funding, and branding unique business concepts which span the food, music, and technology spaces. As a dedicated community advocate, Desi is currently leading the strategy of the economic development of Soma Filipinas, a newly designated cultural district in San Francisco. He believes community, consciousness, and culture are the keys to developing today's thriving commercial ecosystems. And with him is Gina Marco, who is also uh, a board member on Cultivate Labs and also helps to put on this wonderful event. Gina Marco Rosales is an events enthusiast, efficiency nerd, dancer, and nonprofit advocate. As a marketing events lead at X, formerly known as Google X, Gina creates opportunities for the community to engage with X and their moonshot projects. She's also the founder of Make It Marco, a San Francisco event production company focused on creating magical, meaningful moments through events. Without further ado, I'd like to present Desi and Gina. Thank you, guys. Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming out. Um, what she didn't mention is I actually come from Tech2. I moved to San Francisco summer of 99. This is a time before we had broadband or iPhones. And when we were streaming video, it would actually kind of look like this. Kind of reminds me of real audio. Um, but I got really involved in the creation of uh, Soma Filipinas and uh, the Filipino Cultural District because like many of you uh, that have been in San Francisco for at least 10 years, anyone? 10 years, San Francisco? Cool. So you've been here for, for a while and, you know, here in San Francisco, we're going through a battle of our soul right now, right? You know, people have divided a line between us versus them, tech versus everybody else, but it doesn't have to be that way. You know, oftentimes they see our industry as this evil empire that's going to come and just displace everybody. But we all know here, being in this room, that this is just a profession. It's not a lifestyle that we have chosen. And, you know, in choosing a profession and being a good citizen, there are different ways that we can make our city better. And this is how Gina and I have chosen to make our city better, is getting involved with Soma Filipinas. So Soma Filipinas is actually a Filipino cultural district that has really, really big boundaries. It goes from like second to 11th market to Brandon, which is pretty much all the south to market. And, you know, this is a really big nexus point for our city for a lot of different reasons. One, it's, you know, the home of like tech 2.0 unicorns. Uh, two, it's an area that's being redeveloped uh, rapidly. You know, we see it all around us, the Trans Bay Terminal, all the new streetscaping with the bike lanes. And it's also, oh, <laughs> a place for me to see myself through the mirror. Whoa, look at that, look at that time lapse. Whoa, look at that delay. <laughs> hey! <laughs> okay, so, um, and when the map comes back up, what you'll also notice is that uh, that map is actually not a map that I designed. It's actually a map from 
city planning. So this is an area that the city is telling developers to go buy buildings and real estate and build up and address our housing crisis. So it is really kind of a symbol of where capitalism is right now, right? As we're building wealth, we're also building inequality by accident, you know? How do we solve that? So our, our mission and our role in Soma Filipinas is really to try to kind of unlock that solution and trying to find a way that we could take economic development and use it to the advantage of our community so we can develop uh, new spaces and prevent displacement of Filipinos in South of Market. So, okay, no slides. I'm gonna have to freestyle this. So um, one of the challenges that we have with Soma Filipinas is that we don't look like any other kind of Asian cultural district. Um, you go to like Japantown, you go to like Chinatown, you even go to Little Saigon, and one of the things that really kind of uh, puts those districts together is that they have a strip of like uh, businesses and restaurants, a uh, commercial corridor that you know that you walked into the cultural district or not. When you walk into Soma Filipinas and we're so vast that you don't even know where you've entered or, or began. And that's partly because there are very few Filipino businesses in our cultural district. So, you know, we spent some time trying to figure a way around this. How can we really accelerate the building of businesses in our cultural district in a really high profile and an impactful way? And the solution we came up with is undiscovered. And undiscovered when this blue light turns on. Hey, what's up guys over in Portland? <laughs> undiscovered is this creative night market where we bring the best elements of Filipino American culture together. And to pantomime what Undiscovered is, I'm gonna ask Gina to do a dance routine to <laughs> interpret un Undiscovered is. Not really, do you, do you wanna describe Undiscovered while um, we have the slides to come up? I love it. This is a true test of Desi's um, presentation mode because we've given this presentation so many times. We're like, okay, now you have to memorize it. There's no other option. Um, so Undiscovered actually, so I also, uh, like this in my bio, I used to work in tech as well. I worked at Google slash Google X for about seven years working on self-driving cars and loon balloons and crazy stuff like that. Um, and I actually quit to start my company because of Undiscovered and what was happening with Soma Filipinas. I actually went to a meeting where Desi gave a very similar PowerPoint presentation and got sucked in and was super inspired by what was happening and knew I had to get involved. And so I basically pitched to him like, hey, I want to get involved. More people should know that Soma Filipinas exists. Let me throw a launch party. We'll get a ton of eyeballs to come out, people to know that it exists. They could feel this pride and then we'll move forward. And he was like, okay, great, let's do it. And then he went ahead and got a bunch of grant money and we ended up doing it monthly. So instead of just doing one, we did six night markets that first year. We took over the SF Mint and made it happen. So that was year one on Fifth Street. Year two was last year, we went and took over the Chronicle parking lot on 5th and, oh no, 6th. And then now year three, we are at 7th Street taking over another giant parking lot next to the federal building. So we're kind of going down the corridor that we're trying to build to create some of Filipinas and leaving our mark and showing people, this is how we can activate empty space. So something that's like a street where you probably may not want to walk down that street, you know, if it's dark at night or a parking lot that just has a bunch of cars. We take it over for one day and turn it into something amazing and exciting where you feel comfortable having your kids out playing with Legos and coloring. So that's like the goal of what we're trying to, trying to create. So actually what's exciting about us presenting today is that, um, this Saturday is one of our last undiscovered of the season. So here we are in our third season. Like I said, we've done a monthly. This is probably like our 20th undiscovered or something. It's insane. So we have over four, anywhere from five to 8,000 people that come out each day um, to check out the event. We've got live music, entertainment. And on first glance, you come and you're like, this is great. What a fun festival. It's so cool. Yes. It is a fun festival and that's what we aim to do. But really when we dig deeper, it's about creating this economic development engine for new businesses. That's really the focus. We bring in these new businesses that are just starting, get them a ton of eyeballs, get a lot of people to come check them out and find who are the top sellers, who's selling a lot, who is like reaching, um, the, reaching the markets and selling the top stuff. 
and then we see how we can develop them further. So this Saturday, we're celebrating the 10 year anniversary of this amazing um, POC music agency called Beat Rock. Um, we've got all kinds of kids, kid friendly activities. We're doing a special food feature of adobo, but flipping it. So what's like a new take on adobo? Squid adobo. That will be interesting for sure. Go ahead, next one. Um, do you want to talk about this? Yeah, you know, one of our other initiatives too with Undiscovered is like building places where people can see the uh, cultural district come to life and also build partnerships with our neighbors. So on Stevenson Street is the headquarters of Zendesk. And Stevenson, as uh, Gina was hinting, is really a downtrodden, drug filled alley in Soma. It's one of the worst places you want to go to Soma. And so one of our missions is how do we activate it and transform it? So one of the ways we do it is the big bang of Undiscovered, but what do we do outside of Undiscovered? So we partnered with Zendesk to create this beautiful court called the Undiscovered Court. It's really a play space where we bring in all kinds of different health and wellness activities from dance to DJ classes to martial arts to really bring the community out into uh, Stevenson Alley. And it's, uh, it was really a community led effort. We had 75 volunteers come and paint this mural that took about three weeks to uh, put together it's actually based off uh, Vinta sails or Filipino uh, uh, sailing patterns. Um, and we kind of just tweaked the, the colors a little bit. And so you can come check this out. Uh, it's open every day, Monday to Friday from 11 to three. And it's one of like our, one of our biggest projects to date in creating an actual space outside of a night market to gather people and develop things economically. One of the things you're gonna learn about our economic development model, it's really simple. We make economic development fun. You know, when we make a space fun and active and beautiful and we bring it to life, people want to spend money. So you'll see what Undiscovered, we raise the vibration, we bring music out, we bring dan dancers out, people are having a great time. They open up their pocketbook, they buy some food, they buy some drinks, they buy some t-shirts, and boom, what do you know? You have economic development. So this is our test of uh, creating economic development through sports. And this is our next project that I want to show you. Oh, this is not my project. This is Gina's project. Cool. So another thing that we have going on that spurred from Undiscovered. So I am uh, a Filipina woman. I'm Filipino and Japanese, and I'm an entrepreneur. I started my own company. Um, and so there's a word that exists out there. I didn't come up with this word called being an entrepreneur. And that's just a combination of those two words. So I love to claim that I am an entrepreneur, and that means a lot to me because as a Filipino entrepreneur, when I started my business four years ago, I did not see a lot of people like me doing things like me. I had like huge imposter syndrome. You know, I would get into lift rides, going to a big pitch, and people would ask me if I was just coming back from school. Um, you know, I'm like leading, like producing a 5,000 person Google search holiday party, and I've got men calling me sweetie. You know, so these are things that are very particular experiences to women of color. And so we created this summit called Entrepreneurs Summit that brings together um, aspiring and current entrepreneurs, women of color, Filipinas who want to start their own business and get the support and see that like there are people like me doing it. So we actually just finished this last weekend. Uh, we had over 250 um, women of color, Pinais, self-identifying Pinais come out at the Westfield Bespoke Center. We took it over, Filipinoized it. Uh, so sum it by the numbers. And, and this we created because of Undiscovered, finding so many other Filipino women entrepreneurs that I never knew existed. So in that room, we had over 265 people, 36 speakers, 28 lightning talks. People traveled from all over the country and Canada to come. <clears throat> And then what was beautiful is we found all these amazing bosses that we never knew existed. In that room that day, we had 70 Pinais with the words founder, CEO, CFO, president in their title. Whereas before, I only know four total. So now we have this many. We had 11 CEOs in the house, including the CEO of Passion Planner, Angelia Trinidad, 27 founders and 27 owners. So this is like the kind of work that happens when you see representation and we see groups coming together to support POCs and women of color is you get them all coming out in droves actually claiming it and then building a community around that to support. So just a few photos like from the event, we had you know giant 
this was like brought tears to my eyes, just seeing the brown faces on these giant screens in the Westfield Mall I've never seen before. Everyone just taking photos of them, taking over the space, um, bringing banigs, which are like Filipino mats and filling the floor and having people sit on the floor. A very different kind of conference that I've never been to while I was at Google. We had women um, supportive coming, bringing their babies to the event. And, you know, there's babysitters all around, people who wanted to help them so that it was accessible. And then all of our amazing speakers that came out and did lightning talks, which we now have videos of that we're going to post online. So this next generation sees and can hear voices of women that look like them and feel inspired and not feel that imposter syndrome, like, no, I can't do this. So this is all things that are stemming from Soma Pilipinas and from Undiscovered. And then going into our next project. So we're not stopping with basketball courts and night markets. What we really need to do to take these businesses to the next step is that we need to give them a brick and mortar space. And what we've learned is a lot of our retailers, they're doing it as a, like a side hustle. And they're not really ready to take that big leap forward to sign that big lease. So the way we're helping them is we're creating this space called Republica. And if you're familiar with the Westfield Mall, you know, across the street is the Fifth and Mission Garage, and there's all this dead retail space. Well, the city is gifting this space to us for a dollar a square foot. So I don't know if you guys are into real estate, but real estate out there is normally like $10 a square foot. So it's a super hookup. So our plan with Republica is to create the most innovative retail environment that you've ever seen. It's going to be like a little symbol of uh, undiscovered. We're going to have a bar. We're going to have a light cafe program. Um, we're going to have a space where you can host small events. But what's most interesting is that we're taking the best vendors of undiscovered and giving them a home in the cultural district. For example, uh, Archipelago Books, they already have a retail storefront, but it's not in the most ideal location in Soma, Filipinas, right off of 6th Street. Uh, we're giving them a permanent space in Republica. Uh, Assembly Hall, which is a kind of like fashion boutique that has a, a location in the Upper Fillmore, one on Divisadero. They're also going to have a new third storefront within Republica, and there's going to be room for four rotating pop-ups. So the idea is that we're going to find more undiscovered vendors, the ones who have the best sales, and then we give them a home in Republica, get them to ramp up their sales, because you know undiscovered only happens five times a year. And really the best way to build up a business is to generate revenue. So if we can generate revenue almost every day of the year, we're going to get them ready, and then we're going to get them ready to fill all of these new kind of retail storefronts that are being built in, this, in the cultural district. Um, and that's kind of like our master plan of economic development, is that we take these baby steps. You know, We make a big bang with a, a night market, really showcase our culture, and then you know, monetize through the vendors. From that monetization, we monitor who does the best, um, I don't have a slide here, but we actually also have a business accelerator that's funded by the city of San Francisco, and then we invest more resources into these companies. For example, some of them don't even have accounting, so we'll build an accounting system for them, and then we'll give them a home in Republica, and then they'll build up their sales, and then, you know, as a cultural district, we've actually been able to work out some community benefits with a lot of these real, uh, real estate developers that are building up, where we're going to be able to place these vetted businesses into these storefronts. And this is our real, our master plan in building a Filipino cultural district. And some of you might be asking yourselves, like, why is this important to me? I'm not even Filipino. I think that if you feel like you look at San Francisco, where it's gone and where it's been, and you feel that something is not right, I think that we might have unlocked a solution to help marginalized communities come up in this system. Because if we continue to operate in the way that we're operating as a city, you know, we're going to turn into like Brazil. We're going to turn into uh, places in the world where the income disparity and gap is so large that you have gigantic shanty towns and there is no middle class. And we're starting to see that happen now. And so we need to stop that. And you know, the only way that we're going to stop that is that we have to be very innovative and we have to be clever and we got to hack the system. And so what you're seeing here is our attempts to hack the system to make it work for us. And so if we can build a Filipino cultural district by raising the vibrations, making it fun, utilizing city and public resources, then other communities of color, other marginalized communities that are facing these same problems in LA, in New York, in Portland, around the world, hopefully they can take our model 
and learn from it, improve upon it, I hope, and then succeed. And then we might have found a way to tweak capitalism so that we can stop this rampant income inequality. And so I hope that you know we've kind of opened your eyes, kind of inspired you to want to get involved in our cultural district because this district is not just for Filipinos, it's for all of San Franciscans. You know, and, and that's the only reason why I would get involved because I'm not a very insular person, I'm not even that like Filipino, but <laughs> but I really believe in what the values of San Francisco is, is which is like being inclusionary, finding creative ways to bring people into fringes and raising them up. So thank you for uh, li listening to our rant. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Does anybody have any questions in the room and also remote? Thank you guys, that was awesome. Oh, there's a question back, back there. Hey there, so I know that uh, one of your big pushes is talking about how to get people to be an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur that you were talking about before. So are there any initiatives as to pushing that kind of agenda since, you know, like being Filipino, everybody's kind of brought up to be, oh, you're either going to be like a postal worker, you're going to be a nurse. So like, how do you get them to change that mindset of only thinking, oh, I'm just gonna go into medical school rather than trying to become an entrepreneur uh, in your own, you know, in your own business? So I think it's visibility is the most important thing. And like, thank you for that because that's like so much of what we talked about at the Entrepreneur Summit last weekend. Um, people in the next generation seeing options, that's how we change. Because when I grew up, the only options that we were seeing or hearing from our parents' generation who are first generation immigrants was like, yes, get a steady job, go work at Google, Gina, like get that salary, get that 401k. Like that was what they wanted for us, which is fair considering what they went through and what they struggled to come here. And so, seeing and promoting these other lifestyles and these other jobs and these other ways of living and seeing more people doing it, I think is what is going to help the next generation feel comfortable and feel brave to break that cycle and kind of jump into something that is maybe not as safe as what our you know immigrant parents wanted. And part of that is intergenerational learning. So having events like Undiscovered where our parents and our lolas, our grandparents are coming and seeing or entrepreneurs where like my mom and my aunties came and literally sat with me here, gay CEOs talking about how, literally someone said this, after she made her first million with Passion Planner, her mom asked her, when are you going to get a real job? So it's like hearing these stories, I think is what's gonna break that cycle and let people feel confident that yes, I can do that. Um, and then having support once you do decide to take that leap is going to be the most critical part, which is why Accelerator is really important to give support to those businesses that we think have the most potential to really make impact in the district. Anybody else have questions? Hello, this isn't like that important of a question, but for your Republica space, you mentioned that you were able to get um, one dollar per each square foot with the city. How are you able to do that? It's hacking the system. You know, when you think about like economic system, it's not about dollars all the time. You know, there's a lot of different driving forces that make the system happen. You know, part of it is business, part of it is residents, and then there's the civic component. You know, uh, we are a big believer that city government government's role is to find ways to make sure that the system works in a balanced way. And so we find advocates within City Hall to see the same point of view, that see the, the rampant inequality that's happening in San Francisco. Like, think about it, like, even though San Francisco is one of the most progressive cities in the United States, we are also the best symbol of capitalism because we make so much money here, yet we haven't figured out a way to balance the system, and that's government's role. So we find advocates within City Hall, and uh, our advocate in City Hall that made this deal happen was actually the late Mayor Ed Lee. He actually came to one of uh, the Undiscovered's in the first season. We had 40 minutes, which is really rare, 
with the mayor to like walk around and talk to him. And he was totally like into what we were creating as a festival. And then, you know, we whispered in his ear what our master plan was, is that we wanted to build a commercial corridor of businesses on Mission Street. We have already eyed the fifth admission garage. So, you know, I planted the seed in his mind. I was like, you know, Mayor Lee, you know, uh, we would love to do something in the fifth admission garage with all of those empty re retail spaces. And he goes, you know what, you're right. We have no idea what we're doing and I wanna see that happen. And I kid you not, the night before he passed away, he directed the director of uh, SFMTA to sit down with me and make this deal happen. So I really think that Republica was his uh, last dying wish for the Filipino community. And that's why it's a dollar square foot. That's super awesome, thank you. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's like part of allyship Mayor Edley is not Filipino, but he cares about his, his city and his community. And part of allyship and why we present to such diverse audiences too is like anyone can be the connection. And I think that's, I've seen that with all the work that we've done. It, it takes one email. He sent one email to connect us to the right person that was in power to help us get the resources we need. And so that's also a call to everyone too. If you're inspired by this presentation or you have an idea or you know somebody that you might connect us with, it's about sending that email and connecting us to just like bridge the gap and give that referral so that we can continue continue the work. So it's like that one call, that one email from somebody who they trust is what gets us in the door. Any other questions? Portland or remote, does anybody have any questions? I wanna, can we give Desi and Gina a hand, please? Thank you so much for coming again this year. Yeah, and I, if anyone, if you're available this weekend, come out to Undiscovered. Arian will be working the event earlier too. She's like one of my other event managers who's worked with me before New Relic too. And so total community event, everyone is welcome. It's free, come this weekend. I'll drop the links in our chats and also please support Republica. I'll drop the links for the accelerator for those interested in contributing. Um, stay tuned, we have a couple more things happening this month for Filipino Heritage Month. American History Month, uh, some food stuff. So look in your Slack. We have some uh, goodies coming this month for Sweet Wednesdays and for company lunch. So thank you all for coming. Thank you, thank remote you. folks, Thanks for um, dialing in.